Hey guys, so the TrackShot Pro Super Cardioid Transformable all-in-one shotgun mic is quite unique to say the least. When I first saw this mic, it reminded me of those Transformer toys the kids play with because of its unique design. The mic is touted as offering broadcast quality sound using automatically programmable pickup modes that can be manually switched. It features a digital analog output mode, universal for camera, phone, and computer. It has a 3.5 millimeter output and power switch with a very robust shock absorbing isolation mount. An IPS screen, which is easily visible when mounted on your camera, is greatly appreciated considering most mics have screens uh, that face up and are not easily visible without moving the camera. The mic supports two-way monitoring via the screen or headphone jack and offers a bright colored, well-positioned gain control dial. A two-stage low-pass filter that can be set to 75 or 150 hertz allows for some adjustment in varying recording environments. And I made a point of testing this uh, feature that you can hear later in this review. Its built-in battery offers up to 22 hours of recording time, easily meeting any requirements I will subject this mic to. A USB-C port supports firmware upgrades as well as providing a digital connection to your PC or smartphone. Its internal design reduces basic wind noise while the dual included dead cats can be used for more windy situations. This mic feels very premium due to its all metal construction, which I'm sure will hold up well in high use production environments, but it does add a bit of weight that folks doing a lot of vlogging might wanna keep in mind if purchasing this mic for vlogging. Its button controls have a very tactile feel to them, but I would have liked to have seen indicators to be more visible instead of the subtle black color the mic comes with, but maybe that's just me nitpicking. I'll let you judge for yourself. So now that we've got the overview out of the way, let's jump into some audio samples so you can decide if you might like to add this mic to your kit. Okay guys, so we've got the track shot set in A mode and I'm probably three feet from the end of my 24 millimeter G Master lens. And I've got both the dead cats on because it's like uh, late September, I think September 25th going into autumn. The leaves are starting to turn a little bit. You can probably see that in the background. And this is what the microphone sounds like with both of the mics with dead cats pointing straight at me. And like I say, I'm about three feet away. So now let's change the modes and we'll see what we get. Okay guys, same deal, only this time the microphone is in PM mode, which is programmable motto mode. And I put the, uh, the mics, they still have the dead cats on, but they're about 30 degrees apart. So there might be some difference and it's a fairly breezy day too. I can see the, the leaves on the trees moving. So it should be interesting when we get into stereo mode. But this is so, you know, if you want to record in mono, you're probably going to have them straight ahead, but I've got them at 30 degrees just to show you the difference again with the dead cats. So let's move on and we'll take a look at uh, stereo mode because that's where it's going to really get interesting. Okay, so now we're in uh, PS mode, which is programmable stereo mode. Same distance away from the camera and the two mics have the dead cats on them. They're about 30 degrees apart. And so just keep in mind, it's a fairly breezy day. And so this is what you're gonna get when you're three feet away uh, at 30 degrees apart. Now I'll set them to 90 degrees apart and you'll probably see some difference. Maybe I'll walk in front of the camera just to show you the transition from left to right. Okay, so this is stereo mode at 90 degrees, dead cats are on. And you probably wouldn't record this way um, I think if you're, you know, you're doing voiceover or something like this, you're going to have the both microphones right straight in front of you. But at least you can get an idea what it sounds like if I'm walking from one side to the other. You should see the difference in the pickup pattern a little bit uh, that you're going to get from these microphones. And now, while we're in PS mode, let's take the two mics. So right now they're straight ahead. And again, I'm going right back to where I was before, three feet away, and this is what you're going to get. So there's the wind there, so hopefully the dead cats are doing their job. And now if I come, I'm probably, oh, crouched down a bit here, two feet in front of the microphone. And this is what it sounds like in stereo mode. So yeah, I mean, there's a range of what you're going to get from these microphones. Okay, so I've jacked up the uh, extension on the tripod now. Just to give you an idea of what you're gonna get. I got, I'm in PS mode. I got both mics pointing right at me. The dead cats are still on them. So, and this is what, you, this is what you're gonna get when you're two feet away. Um, 
three feet away, it's going to sound like this. Hey guys, Paul here with Path Tech. Uh, just testing out the new TrackShot Pro from Kamika. And hoping that I'm pronouncing that properly. I noticed most of the YouTubers, including myself, I used to call it Comica, but then I watched one of their videos and I noticed they, uh, Kamika, they call it Kamika. So, um, you can rag on me in the comments if you want, if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. But again, you know, we're in PS mode, which is stereo mode, and I'm about three feet away, and this is what you're going to get with this microphone. So, my guess is probably optimum sound quality is going to be, uh, right in this range here, maybe two feet away. And uh, yeah, let's have a listen. Okay, so I thought I'd take another shot at it, and this time I'm still in PS mode, so I'm in stereo mode, but this time I've got the 75 hertz low pass filter on. Uh, so it might knock out some of that background noise a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what it sounds like with this low pass filter on. And now I'll crank it up. There's actually two low pass filters. One is 75 and then 150. So this is 75. Let's try 150 just for kicks and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, so now this is 150 Hertz uh, low pass filter. And so it should be interesting to see. And by the way, I've got both the mics pointed straight ahead. The dead cats are on and uh, yeah. So now if I move in a little closer, It'll be interesting to hear how this sounds uh, once we get it back into post. So I almost wasn't going to shoot here, but when I pulled up... You can hear the crickets going crazy. There is a road about oh, 50 feet off to my left. I'm in PS mode. I've got the mics at 30 degrees with dead cats on. And now I'll just switch them to 90 degrees. And I'm probably two feet, two and a half feet from the lens, the 24G Master. So now just out of curiosity, let's just spin the camera around. This won't be the smoothest video I've ever done, but... Sounds like there's a super cricket, <laughs> or crickets in brackets S over here. Okay, let's hear it. Let's uh, get it back in post, and we'll hear how it sounds. Okay, so this is my favorite place for testing microphone rejection. I'm about two feet in front of the the lens, and I'll just show you what I'm looking at here. So if this mic will kill that background noise, I'll be impressed. So right now, two feet. So this is three feet uh, in front of the lens. And this is about two feet and I'm in PS mode. So pretty straightforward. This would be a good test and I've got the dead cats on. This will be a good test of the uh, rejection tubes to see how well they're working. And I'll compare it for you to a microphone that will do a really good job, and that's my Sennheiser MKE 600. But uh, so far from what I've seen of this TrackShot microphone uh, from Kamika, I'm really impressed with it. It's, it's a pretty decent piece of kit. It's definitely a premium uh, piece of kit. And if you're looking for a microphone for this kind of functionality, doing environmentals, this would be a good choice for sure. Okay guys, so I thought what we do here is I'm going to turn the microphone or I'm going to turn the camera around for a second so you can see where we are. You can probably hear the waterfall. So I've got this lovely waterfall close to where I live. It's actually a dam 
And so I thought this would be a really good uh, test of the rejection of the microphone. And so, so this is what you're hearing. I'm probably two feet in front of the camera, two feet in front of the microphone. And uh, yeah, so if I turn the camera a little bit, the microphone is going to go, it's about a 45 degree angle now. So testing one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to bring it back. I'm really curious to hear what this sounds like to see how well it rejects that background waterfall noise. So if it does a good job on that, it's probably going to handle anything in the studio just fine or any kind of low rumbling noise. And so this is with uh, the low pass filter uh, off and now I'll turn the low pass filter on. Okay, so low pass filter is on and I'll turn the microphone again, but uh, so low, fast, low pass filter is on, low pass filter is on, low pass filter, we're about 45 degrees, now about 90 degrees, and yeah. Okay, so that should be a pretty darn good test with the low pass filter on and with the low pass filter off for you to make a judgment as to whether this is a microphone that's going to work for you. Okay guys, so this is the TrackShot Pro. I'm about three feet exactly from the end of my lens and three feet two inches, 38 inches from the, the TrackShot. And the gain on the TrackShot is set to five. My A7 IV audio input is, has a range from about zero to 31 and I'm sitting at 12 right now. So, so far, the only thing that I have noticed about this microphone is I might want to apply a little bit of uh, noise cancellation in post. And if you've seen any of my other videos on audio, I try to avoid post-production uh, for audio at all costs, but it's quite simple to do in Camtasia 2022, which is my software program of choice. So anyways, we're in A mode on the track shot, and this is what the microphone sounds like. I've got both the uh, recording uh, tubes pointed directly at me, and this is what she sounds like. Okay, so now you're listening to the exact same setup, only I'm in PM mode, which is programmed uh, mono mode. So it doesn't matter what angle you put the microphones to, you're getting a mono signal. So if you um, move the mics to 30 degrees or 130 uh, degrees or 90 degrees, it's still a mono signal that you're getting. And this is what it sounds like. So it's probably exactly <laughs> like the first recording, to be quite honest. Okay, so same situation, only we're in PM mode. I just switched the uh, mics to 30 degrees, and this is what it sounds like. Exact same again, only now the mics are at 90 degrees. So the two microphones are basically like this. I don't know why you would ever want to record like this, unless you're doing some environmental stuff you know, uh, walking through the leaves or something like that, but then you'd probably want to be in stereo mode. But this is what the microphone sounds like. Okay, so now we're in PS mode, which is program stereo mode, and I've got both capsules pointing directly at me, and this is what the microphone sounds like. Hey guys, Paul here with Path Tech, testing one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna to switch to the 30 degree mode so you can get a sample of that. Apologies for the clicking noise. Okay, so now we're still in PS mode, program stereo mode at 30 degree angle. So the mics are just at a slight angle and then next we'll try 90 degrees so you can uh, get a wider range or a better idea of what it's gonna sound like. Okay, and now the mics are at uh, 90 degrees in program stereo mode and this is what it sounds like. Okay guys, so now we're in program stereo mode and I've got both of the microphones uh, pointing straight at me. And this is what it sounds like. Hey guys, Paul here with Path Tech, testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, still about 36 inches from the end of the lens. And now I'll uh, put the tubes at 30 degree angle. There you go, Paul here with Path Tech. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is what the microphone sounds like. 
Uh, I don't know how the plosives are or the s s sounds are, but uh, we'll hear that in post. I'll hear it in post and you'll hear it when you watch the video. And now I'm going to switch the tubes to 90 degrees. Still in program stereo mode and testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Paul here with Pat Tech guys. Today we're going to take a look at the track shot uh, by Comica to see what the audio is like. Help you decide whether this is a microphone for you. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So again, that was PS mode, uh, which is the stereo mode. Kind of the most interesting of all the modes. That's what it sounds like. Okay, guys, so now we're in bi-directional stereo mode, which means I'm still in the PS mode, but I've got one of the microphones pointing directly at my uh, head, and I'm about six inches from the microphone. And now I'm walking around to the front, and I'm right back where I was before, 36 inches away from the camera, and what you're hearing is the stereo mode, but only uh, sound from one of the mics. The other one is pointing backwards. This is what it sounds like. Hey guys, Paul here with Patek, still in PS mode, and audio settings, gain, everything has not changed. Uh, this is what it sounds like. And in fact, when you're watching this recording, the only time there'll be any post uh, auditing, uh, editing applied, you'll see it on the screen. I'll make a note of it so you know what you're listening to. Okay, so that was A mode with two microphones pointing forward and no dead cats. That was A mode at 30 degrees, no dead cat. This will be A mode at 90 degrees, no dead cat. So this is PM mode. And this is PS mode at 90 degrees. PS mode, which is stereo at any angle. I'm at 90 degrees, but both dead cats are on this time. This is PM mode with two dead cats. And this one coming up is A mode at 90 degrees. With the dead cats. This is 30 degrees. straight ahead. So this is still A mode, only difference is now I've got one mic pointing forward and one mic pointing backwards with the dead cats on.
Okay guys, so let's wrap up this review on the Kamika TrackShot Pro. Um, can I recommend this microphone to you? Yes, absolutely. Is it the microphone for you? I have no idea. Here's what I can tell you. In my studio environment here, it's pretty hard to beat my Sennheiser MKE 600, but that microphone is twice the price of this one. I see this microphone as the Swiss army knife of microphones. I think most YouTubers or video production people would tell you that you're gonna need a long shotgun microphone. You can definitely take advantage of a microphone like this that mounts onto your camera when you don't want something that is like a longer shotgun style and you want something where you can record behind the camera and in front. This thing offers a ton of features. I mean, it's really impressive for the price and it's certainly well built. So I would say um, go out and buy it with confidence. You won't be disappointed. The quality is great. And you heard the audio quality at, you know, two to three feet away. It's really decent. Um, it comes with everything you need. You can connect it to your computer. So it's like plug and play. Um, no preamps required, which is, you know, my AT875R. I can't take it out in the field because I've got to take my uh, task cam with me if I do that. And I don't really want to do that. And the only post-production that I found I really needed with this was a little bit of noise cancellation in Camtasia and away we go. So all in all, I think it's a pretty decent microphone for the price. And uh, so there you go. If you found this review useful, give me a uh, hit the subscribe, like, and notification bells. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the positive comments that you guys submit as well. I try to get back to everybody that asked, uh, has a question or needs something um, as quick as I can. And so thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one.